Well, welcome to our journey uh, going through the 200 drawing prompts in the 200 drawing prompt book. Today we're up to drawing prompt 171. Let's take a look at it. The prompt is laboratory. We went all the way back to the beginning and drew an alchemist, which was no doubt the first true laboratory the alchemists were trying to uh, take chemicals and elements and turn them into something else, primarily uh, trying to turn metals into gold and silver. Well, today we're going to satisfy our drawing prompt of laboratory by going all the way back to the beginning. The first real laboratories that I know about were the alchemists. Alchemists were basically folks that are trying to uh, change cheaper metals into gold. This is a picture I got of a uh, an alchemist. You know, they uh, Here's some pots of gold and stuff down here. They never actually were able to produce gold, but that was one of their big uh, goals in life, or to, as soon as they figured out how to alloy metal, you know, then it was the, the next step is, hey, maybe we can take metal and, you know, some cheap metal and change it into silver or gold. So our I'm going to do a take on that. Our alchemist here is uh, he's got all his alchemy equipment here, and he's all drawn in here. I just thought of. Uh, I think it was about the only time I was uh, exposed to a laboratory. I was, uh, 
I was stationed with the Army. I was in the Army for a couple of years when I was a kid. And I was stationed in New York and later Germany. But anyway, we, uh, we got a call one of the uh, civilian laboratories. I think it was GE, I don't know. Could have been. It was one of those big, uh, one of those big research laboratories. And they had some, uh, uh, it's called Picric, Picric Acid. Picric Acid. It's a, it's kind of a sensitive chemical that will explode with just almost no, you know, if you just hit it right, look at it right, it'll explode. Well, a, uh, one of the research scientists up and died on him, and they went to clear out his uh, lab, and they found a bunch of picric acid. Kind of starting from the back, and moving forward in the picture. This window here, is in the background. But the alchemist didn't care about, didn't care a hoot about philosophy or you know irrational numbers or any of that stuff. They were just convinced. You know, they discovered copper. They discovered a lot of elements. They just didn't know they were elements. The, um, the prevailing thought in the, uh, at the time, we're talking, you know, 2000 BC. were that uh, fire, water, air, dirt, were all elements. In the, in the Renaissance, they began to discover real elements. And They started to classify them, you know, according to their physical characteristics and what they reacted to and their weight and their density and all those kinds of things. And then They didn't, they didn't exactly know why all this was happening, but they just kept classifying them. But back to the astrologers, uh, the Romans and the Egyptians that uh, came kind of after the, uh, the Greeks. Well, I mean, the Egyptians go back farther than the Greeks, but in terms of scientific progress, the Egyptians and the Romans, the Romans, of course, were kind of last there, but they, they didn't really care about uh, natural philosophy all that much or mathematics or astronomy except 
the astronomy that it was a, was uh, that was needed for navigation, and that was what kept most astronomers uh, astronomers employed was navigation. So the advancement of science kind of benefited by the fact that the knowledge that everybody everybody gained uh, changed from culture to culture. It was, it was passed on. And that continued for a long time. The uh, Greeks were hindered by the fact that they uh, they only recognized uh, positive integers one two three four five six seven eight nine ten etc etc everything had to be a rational number and then somebody came along and said well what about zero we need zero you know what if we have no, what if we have a uh, one and we take away nothing. We still have one, right? So, okay, well, I guess we'll have a zero. No problem. Well, what about... Uh, what about the... Uh, if you have a, a right triangle with, with uh, length one, uh, the answer is not a positive integer. It's not even a rational number. Well, that was too far for him. But when that knowledge got passed on to the uh, to the Romans. and the Egyptians, they didn't have that, uh, they didn't have that bias. They didn't have to, uh, you know, they, they didn't have to rationalize everything to that philosophy. They just accepted it the way it was. I got some of my color down here. I, uh, I'm outlining some things because it's, it's kind of all blurred together now. Well, we're uh, Just about drum roll time. Let me find some yellow here. I think this is yellow. I need to lighten up these candles. Also, I want to put some kind of mist here coming up from the from the pot. Now we're going to darken up the uh, our alchemist's eyes. This is a one-time, one-shot deal. Using this ink, if you mess it up, that's it. It's messed up. Can't fix it. Well, that'll do it for drawing prompt uh, 171, which is a lab, uh, laboratory. Uh, we went all the way back to the beginning to uh, the first laboratories, which were 
the alchemist uh, trying to turn lead into gold and other metallurgical deals. So we made us a an old time laboratory. Let's see what tomorrow's prompt is. Tomorrow's prompt is the abyss. And the abyss is normally uh, uh, designated as anyone is the lowest depths of the ocean where sunlight doesn't reach. So that should be interesting. Hope to see you then.